Good morning, everyone. I apologize for the delay. I got mucking around here. Lost track of the time. It's our rabbit hole Friday today. Yay. Gotta love Fridays, don't you? Okay, Fridays, uh, the market does tend to be a little bit sideways, a little bit unpredictable. That's why we've started doing our Rabbit Hole Friday deals. And if you bear with me here just a moment while the charts finish loading, we shall delve into another fascinating trading subject. I've been kind of tossing around a few ideas, a few indicators. I'm always experimenting with something on the sidelines so that I have something to talk to you about. Uh, just a moment here and the charts will be finished. I think today though, we may go old school. And uh, just take a look at moving averages. Moving averages, really the original indicator. All right. <clears throat> Now, you know that, well, if you don't know, you're about to know, on each of your tools, what we loosely refer to as trend lines are actually moving average lines. Now, Indicator Warehouse has got their own proprietary average lines, moving average lines. But, like I said, let's, let's go old school here for a moment and we'll we'll talk about moving averages a little bit traders began uh, using moving averages uh, years ago it didn't take long after physical charting developed when they got away from ticker tapes and they started plotting their uh, their charts when they started plotting the daily activity that they actually uh, migrated shortly after that to average prices. And the funny thing is, if you're going to be looking at a longer term trend, an average price is not a bad way to go. This of course on the daily chart this your default 14 period 14 day moving average and you can see when the average price seems to be pointing up you look for buying opportunities when the average price seems to be pointing down you look for selling opportunities and when the average price of course looks like it's moving sideways well then you bracket the market or avoid it entirely. But you'd be surprised at how well something like this works. It's so simple and yet it can be so effective. If you wanted to tweak it a little bit, you could even just say, okay, when prices close above the average price, I will look for a buying opportunity. When prices close below the average price, I will look for selling opportunities. And you will see that many times you will find yourself on the correct side of the market. I think this is one of the few places here, these couple three days where you might have run afoul of the market a couple of times, but overall you would do pretty well. The market closes below the moving average price, 
you're going to look more for shorting opportunities. It closes above the moving average price. You're going to look for buying opportunities. So I really like, especially when you're taking a longer term view of the marketplace, to have a moving average on my chart and to see how current prices are in relation to the average price. When traders started doing moving averages, they, of course, would start to wonder, well, what, what time period should I be looking at? And because there are 20 days in a trading month, they, they started to look at the 20 day average. So this is your average price for the month makes sense doesn't it so you can see where prices are in relation to their average price right now prices are trading above the average price so you would tend to believe that the market is bullish back here prices were trading below the average price so you would consider the market to be bearish. Again, just a very effective trading tool. And when the markets come back to the average price, well, then they're trading at the average. And you can see how very often you'll get these doji type bars. So we had a little doji style bar here we had a doji style bar here we have a doji style bar here as the market debates well do we want to stay at the average price do we want to move away from the average price what do we want to do um, I have a, an interesting book in my library uh, how to make your fortune trading commodities or how to make a fortune trading commodities and doesn't the author's name escape me at the moment? But he really made moving averages popular. Um, actually, I'll, I'll talk about him in just a moment. Uh, what traders started doing after this, though, is they started to say, well, if one moving average price is good, then two moving average prices must be better. And so what they did, was they would throw another moving average on. Let's find that nice color here. And now they would be wondering, well, what, uh, what average price should we use now? And uh, so a lot of them would say, okay, well, there's 20 trading days in a month. There's 55 trading days in a quarter. Let's compare the monthly price to the quarterly price. That makes sense, doesn't it? So once again, uh, a visual, very clear visual representation of where prices are and what they're doing in relation to their monthly and quarterly averages. Now this is ideal if you're looking to trade longer term. And you can see, again, just how well it works. Prices come up to the quarterly average price. We get that little doji bar. And then prices decide, yeah, OK, we don't want to get above the quarterly average. And we make a strong move lower. Prices move back to the quarterly price. They're a little less decisive. And then they finally settle on uh, re, uh, remaining a little bit more bullish. They move back to the quarterly price. They try to rally, but there's nothing with the rally. And so then they start to fall off. And here we are again at the quarterly price. And notice how the market is struggling a little bit. So uh, again, it gives you a great overview of, uh, of what the market should be doing. Uh, hold on here a second. I've got to Google the author's name because it's going to drive me crazy. I, 
either that or I got to go to the. Uh, Oh, man. Do I have to really go to my bookcase? Ah, R.C. Allen. There he is. How to Build a Fortune in Commodities, R.C. Allen. It's been a little while since I read it. Interesting book. What Mr. Allen did, though, is uh, again the 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 whole mentality of well, if one is good, two are better. Well, if two are good, then three must be better. And so traders would introduce yet another moving average line, and well, if we've got the quarterly average and we have the monthly average then why don't we take a look at the two-week average price so this is what mr allen did and he actually developed a, a very simple trading methodology where once the moving average lines crossed you would initiate buy or sell orders. And uh, what R.C. Allen actually did, because almost all indicators start in the commodities world. M many of you won't realize this, uh, stock trading being so huge, most traders or most indicators actually come from the commodities markets, probably because the leverage is so extreme. You don't want to be wrong too many times. So uh, because R.C. Allen had a shorter term perspective on the market is a lot of traders were looking at the, the, the uh, here we go. They were looking at the five day average, which would be equivalent to your weekly. And then they would be looking at your 10 day average, which would be your bi-weekly and then your monthly average. So they would be looking at their charts like so. So you have your five day, here I'll move this over so it's not so congested. So you have your five day average, that's your weekly average, your 10 day average, which is your two week average, and then your 20 day average, which is your monthly average. And what they would do is when you're, you actually wouldn't initiate a trade on the five day average, you would use that to exit. But when your 10 day average and your 20 day average crossed, that initiated a buy signal. And then when your five day average crossed your 10, that would initiate your exit signal. So you could actually potentially make a nice little move, a nice little profit, or it was a cross right there. So you would slim, simply buy and sell according to the moving average lines. Well, Mr. Allen thought he would be smarter than your average bear, and he sped his up. So rather than have a five day, he moved his down to a four day. Rather than have a 10 day, he moved his to a nine day. And rather than have a 20 day, he moved his to an 18. So you've probably seen this. If you've been looking at charting software at any time at all, you've come across the four, nine and 18 triple moving averages and the, the crossovers that result. And now you know where they came from. And uh, here too, it's not a bad way to go. You can see our uh, nine day has crossed the 18. So generally speaking, the market is going to be a little bit more bullish. People run into problems with this system when they don't make the market prove them right. In other words, 
the moving average lines have crossed and now all of a sudden they're just buying they're going to buy the close of this bar and that's that they're going to buy the close of this bar and they're going to hold on until the five crosses back over and then they're going to exit the trade well you can see that potentially there's a lot of room for loss there but if you use your moving average lines this way to try to give you a bias and then you use whatever tools we've got the you know we've got a whole slew of tools here so let's say i'm looking at my daily chart and i have my four nine eighteen lines on here and my nine and eighteen lines have crossed so now i'm looking for buy signals okay well I'm just going to look at buy signals then. So here comes the Falcon. We're going to get a buy signal. And, you know, I'll get ready for the buy signal. Wherever it's going to be, it's going to print up here somewhere. All right, it's not going to print, so I will. Oh, no, here it comes back. We still have the warning dot. So I'm just going to look now at buy opportunities based on what I see here on my longer term chart, because my moving average lines tell me the market is going to be more bullish. Now, it's important to note that, oh, here they come. All right, let's put this back here for a second. I thought they weren't going to. Okay, so the buy signal is printed. I'm bullish because uh, what I see on my longer term chart. And let's see if the market gives me a little bit, a little bit of a move in that direction. And you can see if you if you adopted that mentality. You know, you actually missed out on a fairly big move back here, but we're going to address that in a second. Come on, get up there. There we go. Almost about three quarters of the way to the profit target and come on, giddy up. Come on. Yay. Okay, so you can see not a bad way to go. Now the problem that traders have is we can't resist tweaking the daylights out of stuff. So the this strategy was actually developed on a daily chart. It was meant for a daily chart, and now you know why the values developed the way they did. But of course, not everybody wants to trade the daily chart. So what they do, what traders do, is now all of a sudden, they take this and they move it, say, to an hourly chart. Oh, sorry, I need a lot more data here. And uh, is same strategies apply. You're looking at your hourly chart. You could even trade this end of day, try to get you some better entries. Look at what's been going on here the last few days, though. You would not have a trade going on. You would have, you'd be looking for shorting opportunities at this point. But if you use you know, something like even just a simple support zone to initiate your trade, you would not be long. Now the moving average line's trying to change. Maybe you draw a trend line like this, you would not have a signal yet. So for the last three or four days, you would not be in the market. 
but when it does start to go, it actually, you can see, once again, it works out not too badly. And then, of course, from there, because traders are impatient, they would move the strategies, say, to a 15-minute chart. And treat it the same way. And then, of course, from there, they would move it to a five-minute chart. And treat it the same way. The problem is that these values no longer have any relevance on these time frames, do they? They had relevance on the daily, but they have no relevance really on a five minute or 15 minute or hourly chart. So what do we do? Well, the uh, surprisingly enough, the 20 and 55 or 50, 55 or 60 periods still have a lot of influence on a five minute chart or a 15 minute chart for that matter. And I think that's because the 20 period moving average is so entrenched in trading because there's 20 trading days in a month. Everybody defaults to the 20 day moving average. And even the FIB traders will use a 21 period moving average because that's part of the, uh, the FIB numbers, the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, the, the five period chart or moving average really doesn't mean very much, however, if you move this, say, to a six period, or no, pardon me, not six, 12. A 12 period moving average, well, 12 times five minutes is hourly, isn't it? It's 60 minutes. So now you have a representation on your chart of what the hourly average price is. Okay, that might be a little bit more helpful. But by and large, the, the two lines that are going to remain the most influential are going to be like your 20 and your 50, 55, or 60. Now, you should not fret too much about your moving average lines. Traders forever are tweaking their moving average lines because somebody gives them a different setting. Um, you know, a lot of them will move to Fibonacci numbers. So a, a 21 and a 34 are very popular. Well, they're going to represent just about the same numbers. Or they'll go from, they'll struggle between a simple moving average and an exponential moving average. Here, let's, uh, let's throw an exponential moving average on here. And the difference, if you don't know, the difference between an exponential moving average and a simple moving average is an exponential moving average is what they call weighted, which means it gives more emphasis to the more recent numbers. A simple moving average just adds up all the numbers for the last 20 periods or 55 periods and divides and averages it out over, gives you the average price for those 55 periods. The exponential moving average gives more emphasis to the more recent numbers. The idea being that the more recent numbers are or should be more influential. Okay, so uh, actually that might be a little bit too dark to see. Let's, uh, let's get something green up here. Okay, so the green line is your exponential 20 period moving average. Or did I make it 20 period? 21. Sure, why not? So here, the green line is your 21 period moving average exponential. 
and your yellow line is your simple moving average. And really, is there that much difference between the two? Doesn't the marker respond at all the same places? I think so. So I don't think you need to panic about it too much. If you'd rather have exponential than simple, then go for it. And likewise, you know, if you'd rather have the simple over the exponential, it's really not going to matter. The simple sometimes tends to be a little bit smoother. Now, uh, what I like, if you're going to watch a, a time-based chart in tandem with your uh, DTS charts, which actually is not a bad idea, it kind of gives you a different perspective, the five-minute chart is kind of my favorite. It's the chart I cut my teeth on. It's the one I'm most familiar with. Here is a very interesting observation, and I already hinted to it uh, on the daily chart. But quite simply, when prices close above your 20 period moving average, you should look for buying opportunities. When prices uh, close below your 20 period moving average, you should look for selling opportunities. Here is the icing on the cake, though. When prices move back to the moving average, if they move back to the moving average from below, they are likely to break lower. If they move back to the moving average from above, they are likely to break higher. So sometimes you have to sit there for a little while and wait but here we are on the daily chart, today's chart, we have moved back to the moving average of the 20 period moving average. We would expect a break lower and we have this very bearish bar. So now we kind of get a little bit more perspective on what the market is doing. And now on the five minute chart, the short term chart, we're going to be looking for shorting opportunities because we had moved back to the 20 period moving average. So I'm going to be looking for opportunities to sell. I'm going to be looking for a sell signal now. See up here, the market moved to the 20 period moving average. We produced a trend change signal on the Falcon and the market fell off nicely. We're getting a little bit of a buy signal now as looks like prices are going to try to get back to that 20 period moving average. But when it gets back up there, I'm going to look for uh, another potential sell. So the 20 period moving average, 74, 71 half. And currently we're trading just a little bit below that. What all this does is it helps you focus on the correct side of the market. It doesn't it helps you avoid flip-flopping, right? Because we had a sell signal here, we have a buy signal here. We have a sell signal here, we have a buy signal here. And they're all valid signals. How do you know which one to take? Well, by perhaps watching a five minute chart, having another perspective on the marketplace, you can say, hmm, we're below the 20 period moving average. Eric says the 20 period moving average seems to have influence even on the five minute chart. Maybe I'll concentrate on shorting opportunities, especially when the market gets back toward that 20 period moving average. And so at this point, you're kind of out of the market. You're just waiting for a decent sell signal to develop. Uh, if you're here on the Raptor, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to wait for shorting opportunities. So we had some number three signals printing here. 
but even at this point, you should have had the idea that, okay, we got a little bit of candy striping going on. We're going to be a little bit sideways. I'll look to short, but I'm not going to short until we take out the lows. In fact, you could even throw your just in case order to sell down there and just wait, just wait them out. You know, or you have a pretty good idea, which way the market should be leaning, don't you? And so you could just wait for the market to come around. Okay, here we go with our early trend change signal on the Falcon, but we're gonna look to enter below those lows. And we should get a little bit of follow through maybe. Yeah, okay, they're not quite ready yet. No. Now this uh, trading this way takes a certain amount of discipline because of course you have to wait for the market to get back to the the average price. Down here where the market's kind of well away from the average price, you don't really have much in the way of opportunities. But look at when the market decides to move. When it gets back to the average price, then boom, down she goes. Gets back to the average price. The overnight was huge. Boom, down she goes. Here the market's a little less decisive as they're flip-flopping back and forth, but here we close above, get back to the average price, and the market tries to get bullish. Gets back to the average price, the market tries to get bullish. Get back to the average price, the market tries to get bullish. You should start to wonder though, at this point here, where the market keeps coming back to the average price and there's no follow through. That you should suspect that maybe the market is in a little bit of a sideways funk. Okay, look at what's happening to our average price. It's starting to move a little bit sideways, isn't it? It's no longer pointing down, it's now flat. So what does that tell you? Well, that tells you the market's in a sideways twist and so maybe we're going to look to bracket what we have going on here and enter above, enter above the top end that has just developed. This is the top end here and we're going to short it below. So we have the market in a bind. So what the moving averages do effectively is they remove a lot of noise from the marketplace. The downside to the moving averages is too many people get caught up with tweaking them. They think that, oh, you know, if I find the right moving average combination, then I can just trade the crossovers. Remember what those crossovers represent, whether you're using, um, you know, your hourly, your half hour, hourly and uh, daily parameters. Or if you're looking at a daily chart and you're using the daily, the bi-weekly and the monthly parameters, remember what those numbers are showing you, what those lines are showing you. They're showing you what the average prices are doing. So right now the market is trading below the average price, but the average price is starting to flatten which, you know, we can see visually as well. Okay, here we go. We're going to get up to the average price. Now, remember, we expect a reaction around the average price. So, so we got in at 69.50. I want to get out at 
Okay, let's let's see what happens when prices get back here to the average price now. I'm anticipating that they're going to try to trade above and and stay above. So look at the little bit of a reaction we had when prices encountered the average price. Did you see how they tried to push down? Bring Adjust my stops here a little bit. So here's the reaction now to the average price. Can we close above? And you'll recognize what's going on here on your Falcon as a trend change signal. Now you know why the trend change signal works the way it does. You get the move that changes the trend line color, you get the counter move because the market is pushing back against the average price. And now we're going to see whether the buyers actually have what it takes to close above the average price and produce a buy signal. Okay, they're trying. They're gonna try to produce a buy signal. Oh, look at that. We're stuck right on the average price there. Get above there, you stinkers. Okay, at this point, I would take my trade to break even. Okay, and it looks like we're going to manage to close above the average price, are we? And get up. Yeah, we closed above the average price, so now we are bullish. We produced a buy signal and we should get up there and hit the profit target. Yay for us. Okay, so a very, very simple way of using your moving average lines. Now, I'm going to introduce you to something new here, and uh, then I'm afraid I have to run. Uh, I thought it was Friday was going to be freed up for me, but it's not. But you can see how just such a simple uh, methodology can serve to keep you on the right side of the market, can help you with your timing if you have the patience to wait for the market to get back to the average price. And if prices are below, you expect the market to remain bearish. If prices get above, you re expect the market to remain bullish. And then when it starts to flip-flop and your average price starts to go more sideways or get that back and forth wave action going on, see, I'm just focusing on the moving average now, not on the price. In fact, If you just look at your basic line chart, right? prices are below the average price, looking to sell. Prices are above the average price, looking to buy. They keep flip-flopping back and forth. Well, then we don't know anymore. Very very simple way of, uh, of looking at the market. Okay, uh, I said I was going to show you a little something extra. What a lot of people don't realize is that you can actually change your moving average parameters
And whereas the charts normally plot on the close, Oh, wait a minute. I used to be able to uh, plot this on the high and the low. Where do I do that now? Uh, edit input. Oh, here we go. Yes. Parameters. There we go. If you, you can see you can use the different plots. Really, uh, the typical and the weighted, the median, not that different from the closing price. You may as well go with the closing price because that's what 99.9% .9 of traders will use. But if you plot one line on the high, and it's here under your input series, and you plot one on the low, You're going to end up with this trading band idea and what this trading band does is very similar to the way you would use a Keltner band or a Bollinger band namely if prices are within this band you're giving your average price a range so you can see if prices are trading within the the band they're close enough to average, right? It's between the average high and the average low. So this is just a chop fest. This is grist for the mill. But when prices get above the average price or below the average price, well, then they start to get a little momentum, don't they? Look at that. Eh? Prices are trading in here. Market's not really doing a whole lot pokes above for a moment, doesn't really follow through. Price is trading within here, not really doing much. They get below, okay, they had a little bit of a move lower. Back in here, they get above. Now they start to get a little giddy up. So another way of just looking at the marketplace. Now, depending how conservative or how aggressive you want to be, you could use a 20 period or you could default to your bigger 55 or 50, 55 or 60, whatever you want. Believe me when I say it makes no difference. what this will serve to do is it really highlights those periods when the market is in congestion. So right now, once again, we're below the average price. The market should be a little bit more bearish. We're going to look for more selling opportunities. This, by the way, is something that you can transfer to your DTS and Raptor charts. So let's say, uh, well, here we'll we'll do the 55. And again, you can play with this a little bit. Now remember, on your DTS charts, we're going to be looking at. Renko bars, not the time. Okay, so I'm going to bracket the ranges of the last 55 bars, both the highs and the lows. Oh, I should have made those lines darker. Just a moment here. I don't want to break everything. There we go. Ooh, look.
looks like 55 might not be enough. Those bands might be a little bit too narrow. Yeah, we're not really we're not really covering enough. Uh, what I would like to do is I, I would like to encompass that range. So maybe because the Renko bars print so much faster, we'll go with a 200. Oh, by the way, for those of you um, looking at moving average lines on a daily chart, the reason the 200 period moving average is so popular, anybody want to guess? That's right, there's 200 trading days in a year. And the 100 day moving average, well, there's 100 trading days in a year or in six months. Is that going to take? Um, yeah, okay. Not not quite the representation I was looking for. It's a little bit more. Seems a little bit more informative here on the on the time based chart, especially when you hit these these kinds of zones. One day we'll take a look at just price action in general. Strip your charts clean. <laughs> All right, um, boys and girls, I am sorry. I need to duck out. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Dads, enjoy your Father's Day. And I will talk to you on Monday. We'll see you then. Bye for now.